On today's High Watt Soundbite, we're playing effects with hardware. Is there anything more fun in the studio than playing effects with real hardware? Oh my goodness. You know, there is just nothing like the feel of real buttons and knobs when it comes to actually performing and creating special effects. You know, more often than not, when I'm going for a really special effect, I'm absolutely reaching for real hardware. And there's a reason for that. One of the things that I've noticed in my own experience about working with plugins is that it sort of tends to lead me away from performing effects and sort of into the world of programming them. And I think some of you can probably relate to this. You know, there is just something about the physical tactile feel of a knob and a button and the relationship that that has to your brain and to your ears and, and, and just the, the ability to be able to actually perform particularly when you start adding multiple effects together. You know, I can't tell you how many times over the past 20 years that I've gone through the trouble of mapping some of my favorite parameters of plugins to some control surface. And I've tried various different control surfaces, including the one I'm sitting in front of right now. You know, I absolutely love this Avid Artist Mix. And I've talked about this in a past session called Mixing with Faders where I rely very much on the actual tactile feel of those faders and performing mixes, sort of moving away from that on-screen thing. Well, one of the challenges that I've had, and maybe some of you have experienced this, but most of the knobs that I find in, in my experience of control surfaces, they just absolutely don't cut it. In other words, when I reach up to this effect right here, my electrics filter, and I grab onto this knob, it has a minimum position and it has a maximum position. And that distance between is the feel and what I, what I know this knob to actually do when I crank that knob up. The problem that I have with a, a control surface and mapping certain parameters of your plugins is that there's no minimum and maximum point. These, these knobs all just continuously spin. There's no indentation point anywhere in it. It's just a continuously spinning knob. Absolutely useless for performance. I mean, there's nothing about these knobs that I can actually utilize when it comes to performing because I need that point of reference. You know, I need, where's the zero point? After so many years of transitioning into plugins and working so intensely with plugins in our DAWs, going back to some of these original units and, and seeing a piece of gear that has literally a single knob dedicated to every parameter on that piece of equipment, that is just worth its weight in gold in the studio because, of course, I've got all of these parameters on one single page. I don't have to mess around and start looking for like what page I'm on or what knob is it that's controlling that. You know, some of these effects start becoming your real secret weapons in the studio. And of course, you memorize these things like, like the back of your hand. So there is no wondering what to reach for. So this is just something that I've noticed over a couple of decades of working with both hardware and plugins is that in general, working with those plugins sort of leans me away from the actual performance side of, of printing effects and it gets me more into the programming world. For example, if I have a delay plugin that I'm working with and I've got a vocal going into that delay and I get to a point in the track where I wanna crank that feedback knob and have that vocal extend, you know, more often than not, what I'll do is I'll just put that parameter into record and I'll just hit record and just make any kind of move. I won't even necessarily try and perform the exact move that I want. I'll just sort of rough it in so that I can get the data into my DAW. And then I'll just jump into my DAW and, and basically edit that data to make the, the move that I wanted to do. Well, that works. And in particular cases, it's very effective to be able to go into those parameters and, and actually program by hand what you're doing. But there is just nothing more cool 
than playing effects, actually performing what it is that you're actually trying to achieve. And you know, this is something that I sort of got into right at the very beginning of my career, right? When I first started this business, there were no DAWs, there were no plugins. So the only way we could create all of these effects was to use real outboard gear. And most of the studios we worked in just had islands and racks of gear. Got me really into that idea of tactile, you know, that relationship between your ear, your brain, and your fingers on that knob or that button. It's a very, very important relationship that can easily kind of get lost in the world of plugins. There is just something so awesome about reaching for a knob and just cranking it and knowing exactly what that thing's gonna do. You know, we all have to work within our annual budgets in the studio, but I just encourage you to sort of put a little something aside every single year so that you can sort of start adding maybe one more piece of, of outboard equipment to your system. You know, many of you may have colleagues and friends that could have something like an Eventide H3000 sitting in, the, in a rack in the back of their garage somewhere that they haven't even turned on in a decade because they've just kind of left that world. They're totally inside the DAW and they really don't have any interest in it anymore. Well, you know, I encourage you to reach out to just about everyone you know. Ask people, seriously, ask them if they've got some old hardware gear sitting around that they don't use anymore that they want to get rid of. I captured this from my own library but we'll put some extra fun on it. Yeah, that sounds more like it. You know, I just covered this in last week's session, but the whole idea of always continuously building on your own sound library so that you have a bunch of proprietary sounds in your own palette. You know, hardware plays right into that idea because so many times I find myself just coming down to the studio and throwing a sample into the 3500 and just tweaking things out and playing around with effects. And whenever I do that, like I've talked in other sessions, track it, right? You know, it just might be such a random thing. You reach up and just spin the knob and Oh my gosh, that sounds cool. Make sure you're always recording these things. You know, this Eventide H3500 and all the other models that they made, like the 3000 and stuff, they're ancient devices, right? I mean, this thing's almost 40 years old. The technology that's inside it is like ancient. But the engineers that designed this thing absolutely killed the A to D and D to A converter. Just unbelievable sounding units. Yeah, it's just sort of crazy that I'm talking about an A to D and D to A converter that are almost 40 years old, yet they sound unbelievable. You know, there are just certain things about some of these classic pieces of gear that are just sort of epic and absolutely cannot be modeled. So in this continuous sort of pursuit of building our ultimate production rooms, I just encourage you to sort of reserve whatever you possibly can and just sort of keep the radar out. Start looking for just a, like a single channel delay line or a stereo filter or anything that has real dedicated knobs and buttons on it. Because absolutely this will inspire you to want to play and perform those effects in ways that maybe you've not experienced before and what a difference it'll make to your productions. <laughs>